SpaceX, Starbase, Cape Canaveral. You've got questions, we've got the answers. Thanks again for tuning in to episode 81 of Lab Padre's SpaceX and Starbase Weekly Updates. Now let's dig in. Starting this week at the launch site, a new plumbing manifold was delivered to the propellant storage farm. This pipework will be installed on the recently added kettle reboiler heat exchangers, which subcool the propellants while Starship is being fueled. Another round of Booster 10 cryo testing took place at Massey's test site. After loading the oxygen tank partway with liquid nitrogen, the test was concluded and the booster detanked. Meanwhile, back at the launch site, the chopsticks released Starship 25, followed by the arms lowering to the hard stop at the base of the tower. As the clock rolled into Saturday, the chopsticks were raised and reattached to Ship 25. They would stay for the rest of the week. Sunday saw Booster 10 undergo another round of testing at Massey's, filling the liquid oxygen tank to the brim with nitrogen. The booster was unloaded following a few hours of testing. Stacking of Booster 13's LOX tank continued on Monday, with another four-ring section of the booster rolled into Mega Bay 1. With the booster's fourth ring segment hanging below the rest of the rocket's current parts, Booster 13 was placed on a workstation to weld the segments together. A spectacular moonset marked the end of a successful test campaign at Massey's, forming the backdrop for the booster's final full day at the facility. Movax began delivering additional water to the vertical storage and deluge system tanks on Tuesday, which continued through the week as they refilled them after they were emptied for the deluge system's recent modification. After undergoing tank testing and puck shucking, Booster 10 began its rollback from Massey's, heading back to the build site for engines, batteries, and the other remaining systems needed for flight. Wednesday saw the arrival of the next section of Booster 13's LOX tank as it was staged in front of Mega Bay 1. Cleaning of scrap metal and debris from tents 1 and 2 continued at the build site as crews continue to clear the older parts of the site for new construction. Back at Mega Bay 1, Booster 10 was placed onto the engine installation stand. With 33 engines and 26 gimbal actuators to install, there's a lot of work to do. The booster thrust simulator was removed from Mega Bay 1 shortly afterwards, clearing floor space inside the bay. Making use of the new two-point lifting jig, Starship 29 was placed on the ship thrust simulator transport stand ahead of rollout to Massey's for cryo-testing. Over at the launch site, SpaceX's LR-11000 was brought to Booster 9 to fasten a lifting jig to the hot staging interstage ring. Once the lifting jig was attached and the clamps were disengaged, the hot staging ring was removed from Booster 9 to give workers access to the top of the vehicle. Massey's test site saw the test article Ship 26.1 pressurized to destruction, tearing the rings apart above the lower dome and releasing a torrent of liquid nitrogen into the liquid capture berms. We'd like to give special thanks to Mauricio again of RGV Aerial Photography for this week's photos. Looking over the build site, we can see the scope of the groundworks taking place as they were on Wednesday, September 20th. The spaces previously occupied by tents 1 and 2, the mid-bay and part of the road out of the site have been cleared for construction of the Star Factory expansion. Work on the current phase of construction is nearing the foundations by the outer wall. Over at Mega Bay 2, we can see that workers have begun placing the floor on the sides of the top level. At the launch site, ground clearing and leveling has been taking place, extending the ground southward near the test stands and expanding the perimeter of the propellant farm. We can see the beginnings of a new extension of the protective berm in front of the foundations that have been placed for future propellant storage tanks. The additional kettle reboiler subcoolers are all in place and work is underway to plumb them into the system. There are four subcoolers in place on the methane side of the propellant farm and eight on the liquid oxygen side. Friday evening in Florida, Falcon 9 Booster 1078 conducted its fifth flight, lifting off into the Florida sky from SLC-40 carrying Starlink Group 6-16, another batch of V-2 mini satellites. Saturday saw Doug towing a short fall of Gravitas out to sea in support of the Starlink G6-17 mission. 
Recovery ship Bob returned to Port Canaveral on Tuesday with two fairing halves, towing home Just Read the Instructions plus Booster 1078 after the successful Starlink Group 6-16 mission. Just three hours later, Booster 1078 was loaded from Just Read the Instructions to the dockside stand where it will be stowed and readied for transport. Falcon 9 Booster 1058 just set a new record for launches, sending Starlink Group 6-17 into orbit on the rocket's 17th flight. Falcon 9 has been certified to 20 launches. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update, brought to you by Lab Padre. We'll see you next week, and thanks for watching. Lab Padre, out.